Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee. Nearly nine out of 10 Americans oppose abortion for reasons of sex selection. But such acts of gender violence are neither illegal nor uncommon in our country. Permissive abortion laws and high resolution ultrasounds make it easier than ever for parents to target and eliminate unwanted daughters before birth. Now I've followed the issue of sex selective abortion for a long time. I was the first American social scientist in China in 1979-1980 during the beginning of the one child policy. I documented sex selective infanticide in the Pearl River Delta, the killing of little girls after birth by their parents who were under terrible pressure by the government to, uh, to, to end over quota pregnancies. I also testified before the Australian Senate in 1986 against shipping ultrasound machines to China because I argued they would be used overwhelmingly to detect the sex of unborn children and that girls would be targeted for elimination. 37 million uh, baby girls in China have perished in this way. So this is an issue of concern to me for, for a long time. You know, and, until the recent spate of negative publicity focused public attention on these crimes, it was not unusual to find abortionists advertising the availability of sex-selective abortions in newspapers like the New York Times. Now, anyone who's lived and worked in the Asian American community as I have is aware that the practice of selectively aborting female fetuses is disturbingly common. Women, as well as their daughters, are both victimized. Now, Congressman Chabot has already mentioned the, the study, the very gripping and disturbing study by Sunita Puri, an Asian American physician. But it's worth mentioning again because she actually interviewed uh, 65 immigrant Indian women who had pursued fetal sex selection. She found that 89% of the women carrying girls aborted during the study. That is to say, almost all of the women, when they found out they were carrying girls, uh, went in and ended the lives of their unborn baby girls. She found that nearly half had previously aborted girls, and she found something else. She found evidence of gender violence. Uh, these women told Dr. Purry that they had been, by their husbands or in-laws, they'd been shoved around, kicked in the abdomen, denied food, water, and rest in an attempt to make them miscarry the girls they were carrying. Even the women who are carrying boys told of their guilt over past sex selection abortions, the feeling of being unable to save their daughters. So these, these episodes are not isolated tragedies. These are common occurrences in some American communities. Uh, we have two studies now by economists uh, which document sun-biased sex ratios. I don't have time to go into the details, but, but, but the one point that jumped out at me was this. Whether a mother in some of these communities gave birth to a boy could not be predicted by her immigration status alone. In fact, mothers who were U.S. citizens were slightly more likely to have sons than those who were immigrants. This means that sex selection is not a tradition from the old country that easily dies out. The enduring nature of sex selection abortion further underlines the need for the kind of legislative remedy that Prenda offers. Those who argue against sex and race selective abortions do so on the grounds that sex selective abortion is not really a problem here. In fact, Maria Histenval, who wrote a book about this, writes, quote, the prenatal non-discrimination act is not such a bad law. Were it to be enacted in the countries that actually need it? The implication here is the United States doesn't need it. I disagree. While it is difficult to say with any exactitude how many sex selection abortions take place in the U.S. each year, the number is not trivial. Consider that we are talking about communities consisting of 3.9 million Chinese Americans, 2.8 million Indian Asians, Asian Indians, 1.6 million Korean Americans. The highly skewed sex ratios found in census surveys suggest among these groups alone that tens of thousands of unborn girls have been eliminated for no other reason then they are considered by some to be the wrong sex. I disagree with Histenval that the death of tens of thousands of American baby girls does not constitute a problem significant enough to be combated with legislation. Even one death is too many. Finally, this reasonable effort to rein in discriminatory abortions has been mischaracterized by some as, quote, an attempt to restrict health care for women of color, end of quote. What this bill is really talking about is allowing Indian, Chinese, Korean American, and other women the freedom to have babies of their own choosing. Isn't that what reproduct reproductive choice is supposed to be all about? Allowing women the freedom to have the babies of their own choosing. Thank you very much.